Hey everybody, I'm Christy Titus. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Pursue the Wild, Tips from the Wild. And for today, I wanna to walk all of you through how I mount my rifle scope. So whether you're a new rifle shooter or you've been shooting for years, hopefully you'll be able to take away some information from this that will ensure that you mount your optic properly to where the optic is level with the action and that the eye relief is set for the intended shooter. So this combined will give you the best downrange accuracy and the best performance out of your rifle when you're shooting at the range or or a field hunting. First, let's talk about gear. I have a lot of gear in front of me. One of the most important components is this stuff is super inexpensive to acquire and it will last you a lifetime. So investing in a system like this Cabela's Staggered Yoke System allows me to set my rifle in place and operate hands-free, really easy and functional. The next piece of equipment that I'm going to use is a torque wrench and this will allow me to ensure that the torque specs are perfect from my um, rings and bases on my optic. Also, I'm gonna be using a leveling kit and these are all available at pretty much any retail location. I got mine at Cabela's and Bass Pro. They even sell these in a pair where you can buy the torque wrench and the leveling kit in one, um, one purchase. So that's super handy. The other thing I use uh, is a Night Force tool kit. Night Force sells a tool kit that has preset uh, factory torque settings. So when you use these tools, you don't have to operate or manipulate um, a torque wrench, it's secondary. So I also have this, you don't need this necessarily, but if you are running Night Force Optics, it's really handy to have. Once you have all of your gear and you're ready to mount your rifle scope, the most important consideration that you need to make is firearm safety. So we wanna make sure that you don't have any ammunition in the room. You also wanna make sure that your magazines, if you have one, are out of the firearm. And another safety feature is to actually remove your bolt. Simple bolt removal will ensure that your firearm is inoperable and you're safe to mount your optic. When you shop for scope rings and bases, it's really not like a one size fits all plug and play easy um, purchase. It requires a little bit of research and some time. The first consideration you wanna make is you want to check the diameter of your optic. So it can either be a one inch, uh, 30 millimeter or 34 millimeter. I'm running a 30 millimeter um, scope on this. So my rings are also 30 millimeter and you can see that listed right here. In addition to the diameter, they're also sold in a low, medium, high or extra high. And sometimes you don't know exactly what height would be ideal. So for this example, I brought two different heights of rings. The goal is to mount our optic as close as we can um, to our firearm, the action and the barrel without touching the barrel with the optic. So we're gonna test out these two um, scope rings and bases and see which one is a better fit for this combination. The last thing you want is your Picatinny rail to come loose, then your entire optic system will fail. So what I wanna do is just double check that this Picatinny rail is tight and some people actually even remove these and uh, put Loctite on them, which is definitely an option. You're just trying to eliminate any potential failure points. And those are all tight, so it's perfect. So for this first test, I'm just checking to see if this low ring will work with my optic without having any interference. And as you can see, there is no interference with the optic on the rifle's barrel. So these low rings will work perfectly. The mediums would also work, but what happens, it actually sets that optic farther off of your barrel which um, can diminish your sight picture acquisition if you don't have a cheat comb. So it's just a more comfortable way to operate the firearm to get proper sight picture, the lower your optic can sit um, in relationship to the barrel and the action. So these low rings are perfect. So now that we've identified that that is this correct size of ring, we're gonna 
properly install them. So one of the things I want to check is the spacing here um, from the optic in these rings. So it's looking like just based off my previous experience that this will be a good spacing. I might move this front ring forward just a little bit, but the back one should be okay. So I want to set this in and I'm going to finger tighten it, but one thing I want to really do is there's some slots in these rings and I want to push this ring forward. And what that's going to do is it's going to lock it in better in place with that forward pressure and same with the back one because it's going to help with recoil. So I set those in. I'm just going to finger tight these and I'm going to eyeball before I lock anything in with my torque settings. I'm going to eyeball this and make sure that this looks good, which looks pretty good to me. And it still gives me some play forwards and backwards. Ideally try to set these original rings in to where you can move the optic forwards or backwards to set the proper eye relief for the intended shooter. So you want to position these on your Picatinny rail in a way that allows some adjustability for each user. And these ones look pretty good. Every manufacturer has their own individual torque settings for rings and bases. So you'll want to check your packaging and if that information is not available on your packaging, Google it online. For this example, the Night Force has the torque settings for cross bolts at 68 inch pounds. The cap screw settings are 25 inch pounds. So it's really easy for me to grab the corresponding tool. This Night Force tool is set at 68 inch pounds already. So I know when I put this on, I put it on and I tighten it. When it clicks over, it'll be exactly at 68 inch pounds, which is perfect to the factory settings. Now on my firearm here, I'm able to do some of this install already without using my bubble levels yet. From here on out though, you need to put a bubble level on the barrel of your rifle and depending on what type of rings and bases you're using, you may need to do this step prior to mounting these. I'm going to put my level on the Picatinny rail because this is the best flattest surface that I have in relationship to the action of my rifle. And then I'm going to take this level, which is going to go on the barrel of my rifle, and I want to go level level on these. And let me explain what that means. Right now you can see that my bubble level is just slightly off on this back level. So I'm going to twist this until it is perfectly level here. Then I'm going to take my barrel level and I'm going to match my barrel level to the level on my Picatinny rail. And what this is going to do is as I mount my rifle scope, I'm going to be able to use my barrel level as a reference to ensure that I'm mounting my optic level with the action. And that looks perfect. Okay, so I can take this one off. I'm done with the secondary level. I'm going to set my optic in place roughly where I believe my eye relief will be. I'm going to put some of the screws on, but I'm not going to torque them until I test my eye relief. So here I have enough tension on my optic so that I can test my eye relief. Um, and the optic still moves backwards and forwards and I can manipulate this in the rings as needed for testing my eye relief. Now we're going to check the optic eye relief. I have my scope magnification turned up to max power, which is going to ensure that I have the most diminished field of view in my optic. And that is the best place to test your optic eye relief. You want to ensure that whoever is using the firearm does this process because it's truly personalizing the fit of the firearm to the shooter. Another consideration is every shooting position that you encounter has a slightly different eye relief setting. So uh, maybe try your eye relief in a couple of different positions. Um, again, always at max power. For the sake of this, we're just gonna try it in one position. And what you want to ensure is that you have a full clear field of view without having to stretch your neck forward like this 
or pull back like this. You want to be able to shoulder the rifle in a comfortable place, close your eyes, open them, and have a full, clear field of view. This eye relief is set perfectly on this firearm. So now what we can do is we can continue the scope mounting process. So once I put the rifle back into my yoke system, I want to use my bubble level reference on the barrel of the rifle. I wanna make sure that this is level before I torque the screws on my rings. Now I'm going to grab my secondary level and I'm gonna put this on the flattest position possible that I can on my optic. For this particular optic, I'm going to use my elevation turret. As you can see, the bubble level on this is buried over to the side. So I can easily tell that my scope is not going to be level and my crosshairs are not gonna be straight to the action. So I wanna make sure that this level on the barrel is straight. And then I'm going to rotate this rifle scope just slightly until that bubble level is level with the level on my barrel. And then I know everything's level, level, level. <laughs> I have my optic on in relationship to my action is perfectly level. And that will mean my crosshairs are level when I get behind the rifle. We saw in the factory torque settings that the cap screws require a 25 inch pound torque. So we're going to adjust our torque wrench to 25 inch pounds and you can see that I've done that here. And I'm gonna work on tightening these screws in an X pattern and I'm going to be doing this in a very slow, almost tedious process because as you can see, each side of these rings have gaps and you want to make sure that you have a level gap spacing on both sides of your rings so that it's not pinching your rifle scope one direction or another. That even spacing is really important. And as I'm tightening, I want to monitor that my optic doesn't get pulled left or right. And as you can see, my barrel level is still level, but my optic level has been pulled off just slightly. So now I'm going to just work as I tighten to ensure that I don't torque the optic and make it lose its level. There, okay, we're good. Now that my rings are properly torqued into place, I can visually confirm that the level on my optic is level with my barrel level that we set level to the action. So I have 100% confidence when I look through my reticle, I know that my reticle is level with the action of my rifle, which is going to give me the best downrange accuracy that I can extract from my firearm and optic combination. Plus, I also know that the eye relief is set on this rifle to fit and suit me, the intended shooter of this rifle, making this the perfect combination for accuracy and rifle fit. Once you have mounted your optic and you have ensured that everything is level, you're ready to reinstall your bolt and get to the range and do some zeroing. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Pursue the Wild, Tips from the Wild. I hope that this segment will help you get more performance out of your firearms.